everyone. Welcome to our webinar. My name is Andrew Townsend. I'm the Campaign Marketing Manager here at eLearning Brothers. Today's session is going to be about how to build microlearning at the speed of light with Lectora templates. These are templates that eLearning Brothers has built uh, expressly for uh, Lectora, and they're really, really cool, and we're going to show you all about those. This session will be recorded. We will email a copy of it out to everybody who has registered, so you can be checking for that later. If your internet dies out or uh, if you have to leave, you'll be able to review the entire recording uh, probably later today. If you have questions during the webinar for, or comments, please do use the questions panel. That's a part of the GoToWebinar control panel. Looks like some of you have already found that, so please do use that and we'll respond to as many of your questions as we can. And I'm, I'll bring some of those up to Bill as well. Uh, we have a great presenter with us today. We've got Bill Milstead, senior developer, with us today. Thanks, Bill, for your time. Uh, you know you're extremely busy, constantly developing really cool stuff, but uh, I appreciate the time that you've given us today. And without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and pass the screen over to you. Thank you. Okay. Let's see if we can. All right. I think you can hopefully see that, right? Yep. Looks great. All right. Cool. So, let me bounce that up. So yeah, so I'm Bill Milstead, uh, like we were saying, uh, developer here at uh, eLearning Brothers. And today what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at uh, building a micro course that I have um, extremely quickly, or as quickly as we possibly can, or as much of that micro course as we possibly can, um, using Lectora Online, all right? Uh, and eLearning Brothers course starters. Uh, if you're not familiar with what course starters are, I'll kind of walk through some of that as we build um, today, all right? Uh, so it's gonna work like this, all right? Um, I've got this content, I'm gonna share it with you. I've got this Word document of content here and a couple of quick layouts. Kind of, it's kind of like a modified storyboard, you might call it. But actual content, what my target uh, slide is gonna look like, and then kind of some notes over here on the right um, to myself uh, or from the designer about um, what to pull this from and maybe a couple of little details there. Um, a little bit different than the storyboards I've had in the past, but uh, it's a little bit easier to kind of move through and see for my purposes, at least in this this um, this webinar. So we're gonna be working off of that and we're uh, gonna be using a course starter that I downloaded from our Lectora asset library here in the eLearning Brothers website, right? And you do that just by hitting the asset library, going to the tool of your choice, uh, you'll land on our learning or loading screen here, and then you can select the course starter that you'd like. Um, course starters are kind of our way uh, uh, of giving you exactly what it sounds like, a way to start your course, right? Uh, five layouts, four interactions, and a, a set of quiz questions, as well as uh, feedback um, screens for that quiz and like for um, But to get that, we got a number of styles of them you, you can choose from from our library. To get it, you just go to the individual style that you like in the library page, Hit the uh, download Lectora online e-learning template package and it'll download, obviously. And then you can import that into Lectora directly um, and open up a brand new course that, that's got your, your foundation ready for you. I've already gone ahead and front loaded that here today because I've got some uh, suspect internet connection. It, it does what it wants. Um, uh, so, you know, I've kind of tried to just. We're gonna skip showing that process and I've just gone ahead and, and loaded it up to, to make sure that, that we don't burn 20 minutes going over how to, how to load it in there. But it's a very, very straightforward, you know, two-step process really. Um, I'm just gonna basically work for the rest of the session, okay? So I'm gonna bounce back and forth between my notes and that document and this Lectora online course. And I'm gonna to try to get as far as I possibly can through this course, um, hopefully we can finish it. Quiz questions and all and, and run through. Now, a little bit of level, level setting before I actually jump in and get started, okay? So obviously it's gonna be highly tactical today. We're not talking theory, we're not talking really much in the design space of, in, of things. This is full on practical, how to take this course starter that we offer and this Word document that we have and get up and running with the majority of a, a, of a you know decent sized micro course within 30, 40 minutes. That's what we're aiming for. Um, but we're also going to try to keep it pretty conversational. So um, because I'm showing you in tool stuff and I'm showing you with content in kind of more of a real world scenario than, than sometimes gets done in, in some of the webinars I've done. I've done a lot They're theory based, right? Um, I do want to, to weave in questions throughout. So 
if you have a question that pertains to the screen we're on, flag somebody. We'll try to get in there and answer as we're going forward. I'm probably going to stop and ask, ask for questions as I'm moving through as well. Okay. Uh, and I'm also going to go ahead and um, be previewing as we go so that we can kind of get a working feel for this. Um, last kind of bit of level setting here. Uh, I'm just going to focus on desktop right now. Now, our course starters, um, as you can see, I'm moving between the breakpoints here in Lectora. We set them up for the portrait views of both tablet and mobile for you so that it's all kind of preset and ready to go, which means that if you come in and you make changes to this, but you're not really moving things around, you're probably going to be ready to go for those devices without really having to make much change. We are going to be moving things around today, though. Um, and because we're on such a short time frame and I want to try to show you a variety of different slides, I'm just going to stick to desktop. Um, everything that would be done, obviously, in desktop is going to be done exactly the same way just for those different devices. All right. uh, okay, so all that kind of you know stuff that's put together or, or put out there, I'm going to go ahead and jump in and get started working. Uh, we'll look at just very briefly what uh, Core Starter kind of is made of, and then I'm going to just start using it the way that I use it. All right. Okay. So, like I said, um, Core Starters are a, it's like a foundation file for you to work from to get your cart courses started rapidly. Very, very, very rapid, in fact. Um, five layouts, four interactions, and they're all set up just about exactly the same. So even if you went into our library here and instead of downloading the FIRA file that I've got for you, you downloaded the Roboto file that's in here or any of the ones we're releasing in the next couple of you know days and weeks here, um, it's all going to be kind of set up about the exact same. So what I mean by that is if you look over here in the title explorer, what you're going to see at the very top, you're going to see an includes tag. That, that includes the global stuff that you need to get this thing kind of running and going, stuff that pertains to every single slide in the course starter. So font tags, any job, JavaScript libraries we may or may not be including for a given course starter. There's a little live area thing there. Um, that's for you as a guide. If you go up and you, you turn it so that in the properties pane you have it always on top, um, that'll allow you to very have a quick and easy visual reference when you're moving things around on screen. We also include this theme elements um, group here, which has our header, the logo, and the course title text up at the top. Uh, you make one global change to that. So for instance, in this one, working from home is what we're going to call this. That's going to kind of populate throughout the remainder of the course. Same thing with your logo. You need to make a change there. All you need to do is select the logo, go over to your properties pane, and either browse for a new file or if you've already got it in your title, replace it there. And that's going to be for everything in the slide. Okay. Um, now, on some of our, our course starters, we also have some decorative stuff that sits in here that applies to every slide. So like if we've got a, 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 you know, a shape that, that goes on every single slide in the same spot, we're going to include that up here as well. And, and we do our best to build every single thing in tool, including kind of gra graphic decorative elements that may be global, like we're talking about, um, so that you can you can edit them in tool very easily. And then the last thing that we keep in this top area is our navigation. Just this, these two nav buttons, they do exactly what you'd expect. They move you back and forward. Um, and if you need those elements, you keep them in there. If you don't, you don't. We're going to focus on the rest of it from here on out. Okay. Okay. So after that, we, uh, in all of our course starters, we section the course starter into several sections, three main sections, the layouts, interactions, and the test. Inside the layouts are the individual pages that we've created for general layouts for you. Inside the interactions are just the same thing, interactions, and then test, right? We've got our test questions and then our pass and our fail page. All of them are gonna be set up that way, so it's easy to navigate. You know what you're expecting to see when you open the file, you know how to get in there and start working. Now, uh, the first thing I like to do, because um, now we're getting into the practical part, is when I go in and use one of these course starters to build out a course, uh, an actual course content file, the first thing that I like to do is actually create a new chapter, and that's going to be my course content chapter. I like to reserve these layouts and interactions chapters um, as kind of my, my file repository, my template repository. I copy and paste from those into my course content chapter, uh, and then I move forward from there. Right? So we're going to do that now. I'm just going to create this new chapter here, call it course content, uh, and I'm going to delete that first page that it creates because we just don't need that. Um, we're going to definitely need a welcome layout in this one, I know that. Um, but other than that, I'm not 100% sure, so I'm going to go ahead and consult my uh, little storyboard thing that I have here and just take note of the next few pages that, it's, that it says I've got, right? So 
first one here is a 50 50 and then i've got a timeline interaction and then it looks like i've got another 50 50 and then a three column or, or uh, uh, an objectives okay so a few things going on here got a 50 50 i'm gonna paste that one in i've got a timeline interaction i'm gonna try to paste that one in as well And while everything is uh, starting to slow down here for me, so I'm just going to force quit a couple of things. Sorry, folks. What'd you get for trying to be efficient? <laughs> All right. So we got our timeline. And I think after the timeline, I said we had another 50 50, and then we were going to do a layout based on our objectives. I'm going to paste that in there as well. And I'm going to grab that objective slide and do the same thing. We're going to pause for now because that's kind of a lot to work through. And then we'll just pick up that process later if we need. Um, but usually what I would do is I would just do that for all of the, the potential pages uh, in, a, uh, in, in a, uh, a course that I may have here, right? So we've gotten up to this, this, um, this cybersecurity at home screen. I would just continue that process going forward. Looks like I got another timeline and then a standard click to reveal after that. Um, so we can you know, actually, well, we'll just get out do it just to do it. All right. Um, so once I've got all my pages actually pasted and set up in here, um, basically from there on out, it's just a matter of getting in and working. All right. Um, so let's look at this individual page. Because uh, this this basic overview is going to carry you forward for the rest of the pages as well. Um, so similar to how we group an entire course starter uh, in the same way, we're also going to try to set up our pages the same way. We use a lot of groups in course starters and Lectora. Um, on really simple kind of layout stuff, a lot of the time we'll group all of the background decorative elements into one group. Call it background images or background decoration, something like that. And then we'll pop our core page title and content out there above it, clearly labeled. Um, all the items in that background images section are going to be editable by you. Your image, it's an image, use the, use the uh, properties pane to edit that. But also, our background color here is going to use, it's obviously going to be a color fill just in the style pane. You set your color, you can adjust your opacity if need be. But also textural stuff that we're using, like this background dot pattern, we're using a texture through Lectora. You can set a custom texture if you need. Same thing with these overlay bottom shapes and any of the overlay shapes that you'll see. They're not PMG, PNGs, we build them in the tool so that you can go in and edit to rebrand if you need to, like changing the color on there, right? Nice and simple stuff. Um, now, I don't need to. I just need to go in and, and edit this and set it up. Um, so on this one, I just need to drop some content in there. Um, it looks like this is a welcome screen. So all I really need to do is update this title. Rather than uh, changing the headline that's in there now, which is a variable reference, um, I'm going to just change the page title. It's kind of a two for one. It allows me to get my page name in there properly and organize my file properly. And that content will, will automatically populate into the course title for me. So we're just gonna call this one working from home, like we said in our title up here. That'll auto populate. And I'll just put in the subtitle content that we have. Okay, obviously formatting and whatnot, just kind of a standard thing in like Tora, um, use your pane up at the top here. Uh, just text boxes. So two seconds there, we went ahead and made just one change to a title page and one change to a text box, and we've got our working welcome screen. Now that's the easy one, so we're gonna go ahead and start moving through this more complicated content, all right? Now our next page uh, is kind of a, it's also a layout, it looks like a 50-50 layout um, with a character. Um, so I'm just gonna grab my content here, and I do this extra step, not everybody does, but I like to paste it into brackets or some sort of unformatted tool because I don't like right clicking and dealing with shortcuts and yada yada. And I find this just strips the format out and it's a little quicker for me. Um, not everybody likes that, but that's what I do. So uh, I'm gonna grab the headline there, same kind of a thing. I'm gonna paste that into my uh, header pane here, or I'm sorry, into my title, my title for the page here, apologies. Uh, and that'll be automatically reflected in this, this uh, variable reference for the page title. Um, now that's pretty big, so I'm going to go ahead and make the decision to shrink that down. Uh, and 
I want this to run the entire length so that it'll just be on one line. So I'm just gonna grab that and resize pretty simply. Also, this picture is kind of distracting me. Um, I, I know this is supposed to be a 50-50 based layout. It's supposed to have a character instead of this image. Um, since this is blocking it, I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly replace that. Now, um, I'm not sure if I said this or not actually in my level setting, but one of the, the goals for this session is that I'm also gonna try to work um, using nothing but what's in this Lectora file, right? And what's in my content document. So I'm not gonna go use additional images. I'm not gonna go search for anything on a content library, though that is very easy to do. I'm gonna try to just stick to what's in the file, okay? And I'll show you why I'm gonna do that right now. Um, we include, obviously, all of the images that you need to you know, create what we're showing you on screen, right? So, you know, all your stock photos and whatnot. But we also include a bunch of icons that you don't see. We, we leave them in the title resources so that you have more options than what we have used, and these are all styled to match um, the course, right? Uh, yeah, uh, and, and within that, we also include characters. We include characters because um, we, we typically have a scenario in our course starters, and so those will be also available for you. And um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna try to leverage just those assets throughout the rest of this build so that we have something nice, quick, and easy without having to go anywhere other than inside this template. Okay. That hey, Bill, we've got a quick question. Go for it. Uh, why would you use the var function instead of actually entering the page title text? Is there any benefit to that? Instead of entering the page title text? Uh, you mean manually entering it in this page element right there? Right. Yeah, um, so it really is just kind of a twofer, um, updated in one spot, right? So generally the way that we set up our files um, is that we, uh, sorry, I got a little distracted from the slack there. Uh, generally the way we set up our files is that we, we tend to page title the same thing as the page title on screen, right? So we, we tie those two together so that it's one less place that you have to make your edit. Um, if you'd prefer, to not do it that way, if you'd rather just enter the, the content there, you can overwrite that extremely easy, easily. It really is just kind of a workflow thing that we've seen that we like uh, and that a lot of our users like and have gravitated towards, so we include it that way. All right, so there is, I'm gonna go back to uh, another question here, but I yeah. think we can try to answer it a little bit later as you're moving down. Uh, people would love to learn a little bit more about the, the asset library. Uh, how that works uh, and, and what icons are available. You know, just a general overview of, of what other things they can find and, and access in the library. I know you have a lot to cover, so maybe we can cover that a little further down the road. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll, we'll take a minute and look at the, the LB, ELB library more broadly, uh, probably towards the end of this if we have time. Um, when I'm referencing the library here, uh, I'm really referencing uh, a, a course starter specific library of branded assets that fit this course starter. And so what we do, right, is we include, so for instance, I want to change this 50-50 image to a character. I'm going to change that to one of the eight characters that we've provided in this course starter that fit that style. So that's in the, the title library, the, the actual you know uh, asset panel that you have here in, in Lectora. Similarly, you'll see me make some edits to some icons uh, in a bit. And those, we include a large array of icons that match this style that in terms of the way that they're drawn, the way that they're colored and handled. Um, we include those in the title library as well. The ELB library is much, much larger. We'll, we'll address that as we go forward. Right? Um, so yeah, so uh, real quickly there, I just made you know one, one quick change. I grabbed my 50-50 image that I had on this layout, switched it over to a character through the image drop down here. Um, I very easily could have inserted a character through the, the Lectora pane, but I chose to use the library one because we were talking about that. I'm just going to go ahead and move uh, Yusuf here over to the side of the page. I'm going to go ahead and adjust to this content here and check that layout that I have. So it looks like I've got um, a subtitle and then I've got this quote content that they're wanting me to build. So if that's the case, I'm actually just going to drag this thing up to be pretty close to underneath my title. Quick little grab of my content and then we're going to have to build the other elements that, that aren't in there yet. Okay, but that luckily, from, from the way that Lectora works, very simple. Before we jump into it though, I just wanna do a very fast view here uh, to make sure that I've got things kind of set up the way I like with my text there. I think that's fine. We could probably move my headline up a lot. That'll work. Okay, and so now 
I'm going to go ahead and build out that quote bubble um, that the designer had in the thumbnail here. Now, you could do that two ways. You could build it just, uh, you put a caption in there uh, and then put your text in it, or you could build it as two objects. I'm going to build it as two objects. I'm going to build it as a, a content box that I'm going to drag down here like that, just copied and pasted the one above it. Uh, and then I'm going to put the quote panel behind that, the actual shape behind that. And the reason I'm doing that is that I, I want to have more position control and formatting control over the text that goes in it. Okay. Um, so I'm going to make that all Vera Sands. I'm going to make that all 16. We're going to make it all white text. So I need to edit our bullets. So you do that in the little, sorry, I got that bad connection there. Um, so you do that in the, the uh, settings pane here for your bullets. All right, so that's quick and easy. I move that one over a little bit, and now I just need to go ahead and plop my quote bubble behind it. So I'm going to grab that shape. All the way down, Lector has actually a, a really nice of a set of options for built-in shapes. and does a great job with that, so you, you should have plenty of options there to, to kind of do what you want as you're building out courses with uh, obviously control controllers on each one, right? So it's not fixed. You can go in and control the corner radius like we just did. You can provide a uh, color stroke and fill independently. So we're going to set that and then we're going to grab our little speech point here and drag it over. So it looks like it's coming more from Yusuf. There we go. Oh, and it's on top. So we just need to move that to the back. And we'll call this quote content as well, just to help keep it a little more clearly organized. So now that looks okay to me. I'm just going to one quick run here, make sure it's all good. Looks good to me. And I think we can move on. Now that that was remarkably simple to me and seemed like it didn't take a ton of time. Um, those That was also just a standard layout, right? So we're going to look at an interaction now. Um, this next chunk of content that, that I've got for the next page, um, it's a little Venn diagram, and my impression from this, what this says is that I gotta click each one of these icons here, and this content uh, on the right hand side is gonna change. Okay? Um, the call was to use a, a timeline interaction, so that's what we're gonna do. All right? Um, this should be a little more tricky because it, it is an interaction, but I don't think it'll be a ton more tricky. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to change that title again. Cybersecurity is a joint responsibility. That'll auto reflect in this current page name. Um, I could manually set that if I wanted to, but I, I like to use that that way. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just referencing my layout here. I need to right align that title and I need to right align my text beneath it. So I'm going to do that here. Uh, and while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and start making things work. The first thing I need to do probably is actually just make, make it a little more manageable. Everything kind of auto expanded on me there. Um, but I'm going to mute all of the objects that I don't need right now. And then I'm also going to start deleting some of these objects that I don't need right now. Okay. Uh, so title, uh, my title, there's my intro content kind of grouped together in this one single group. So I'm going to go ahead and edit those and get those set where I need them. And then we're going to start playing with the, the trickier stuff here. Okay. All right, we'll right align that. Uh, if I wanted to be super precise, what I would do is actually just grab um, pixel base widths from each one of my objects here uh, and assign them to each other, right? So this one's 450. I would probably go ahead and do the same thing with my uh, intro content and then all of my individual content blocks, but um, I am want to be cognizant of time so a lot of that like very detailed specific cleanup stuff i'm going to kind of leave maybe until later uh, and right now we're just kind of going to be roughing everything in um, going forward okay but i like that all right so that being said i like the way that this cybersecurity and the subtitle layout um, now let's go ahead and start positioning our buttons and getting to our content um, we obviously don't need these last for last three, content tab four, five, and six, we don't need that because this layout just called for three buttons. So I'm going to delete those. Same thing, don't need those last two buttons. So I'm going to go ahead and delete those. And while I'm at it, I'm going to delete this horizontal line as well. So now I just have my three general buttons here. 
looks like this thing needs to get a little bit bigger as well. So we'll make that the full screen. Oops. Hey, Bill, while you're screaming along at 5,000 miles a minute, <laughs> we have a, a couple questions. Let's go ahead and pause and get to them. Let's do it. Yeah, these are these are good to, to take a breath uh, and uh, grab some of these questions just about the platform, about about yeah. Lectora, and then also about our course starters. So the course starters, talk to us about where they are when it comes to Section 508 compliance. Okay, so course starters, we give you a uh, we give you a leg up on 508. Okay, um, so 508 is obviously you know it's going to be specific to your project. You're you're, you're going to have to do some customization no matter what. Um, going out the gates just because people are going to change content you're going to add new new stuff in there you're going to move things around etc so in terms of it being yeah they're 100 percent um we get you started there um and in lectora it's a lot better than most tools because lectora has kind of better options for it uh yeah so 508 um a few things that we do one um going into a course starter so if i were to pause kind of from this like hey here's how we build and and bounce back out to those pages like the layouts and the interactions okay. um every one of these that we give you what we've done uh, before we start building is we've gone in and created a style guide that considers 508 just from the style side of it okay so contrast ratios are taken care of that means that anywhere we've got dark you know background we've got a light enough colored text at a right enough size that it, it works for a certain level of compliance and i would have to get back with you on which level we chose um, but we've gone in and we've done all that contrast ratio stuff, okay? We've also gone in in the build and, and as well as just general kind of, you know, best practices for design. In the build, we've also gone in uh, and we've made sure that our font sizes are appropriate, right? So um, in, in this particular case, you're seeing like 60 point. Um, this one's not logged because I don't have it tied to Fira, and it's, but it's actually like 16 and that'll update, yada, yada. Um, we go in and we make sure that nothing's below 14 point, uh, that everything um, is at least, you know, a minimum uh, pixel size for interactive objects. So anything that has to be clicked is at least, you know, 50 pixels or so. Um, we kind of handle all that that upfront legwork for you. We also go in and we maximize the way our pages are set up for tab order. So in our background images, for instance, um, any non-narrative images, uh, like just decorative stuff, have been given an empty alt tag, so they're skipped. Same thing with obviously our background decorative stuff, right? These colors and shapes I was showing you about, showing you earlier. Page title and you know page content is arranged appropriately for reading or um, on infographic stuff, which is a great or infographic slides. We go in and we set up um, so that everything is built in the tool and you can edit, right? But we, we clearly don't expect you're going to use this exact slide exactly how we presented it. But we set these up to give you a, a guide for how to set your own of this type up. And what I mean by that is um, we've gone in and constructed this graph to, to read a little more cleanly. Um, so we have it on all of our, our text labels, for instance, we have them set to be hidden from a screen reader. And in place of that, we also include a placeholder for a long description for what this, this, this graph is actually showing. So that you're not kind of, you know, you don't have all those fractured you know, elements that are being read by screen reader. Um, long story short, I mean, we could do a we could do an entire webinar just on 508, how to set it up, and how, what kind of what steps we're taking. But long story short, I think uh, is that we, yeah, we 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 kind of we affect tab order. We pay attention to all of the device requirements and size requirements and contrast requirements, and try to give you you know a 95% or probably better even head start on on everything you're doing um, and all of our assets in the file. Does that does that help? Does that make sense? Yeah, I think that's great. Um, right. The one other question I'll I'll pitch to you, and I I think it's a slow pitch. Do you know if there are JSON files in the HTML output of uh, Lectora files? If there are JSON files in the HTML output. Um, uh, well, I mean, uh, how, can you just um, eh, I don't want, can you shoot that to me in email and yes, we'll have we'll to that offline. Just, Absolutely. Yeah, I think that's a better uh, kind of a sidebar because we could get into a whole. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I want to some clarification on that and whatnot. So. Okay, for sure. Cool. Thank you. All right. Um, so 
that being said, I'm just going to go back into this. So clearly up to this point, right, all, all we're really doing on this slide is the same thing we've been doing on the previous two. We're editing and moving text boxes. Now we need to get into the actual interactive bits of this. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, this one, I'm going to refer back to my, my, my page again. Um, I need to get my Venn diagram set up with my icons, and then I need to draw the actual circles for it. Uh, but I need to edit the icons on those buttons as well. Um, so that's the first thing I'm going to do is edit my buttons. I'll show you how those work in a course starter. Um, this is where that icon thing, you know, being stored in the library comes comes in handy. So if you wanted to change those, uh, what, what we provide for you, so for instance, button one, we're going to make a BYO content. Uh, and all three of these we need to make have the same button. We're going to give them this warning icon or info icon that we include. All you have to do is select a button, scroll down in the picture fill, um, drop down and then select the image that you're looking for, the icon that you're looking for. All right, and it'll autofill. Now, after that, obviously, you do need to go in and adjust your states, but that's the exact kind of same thing, right? So you go in, you grab your your warning icon in blue, and you, here you grab your warning icon in white, and you just repeat that process. Okay. Um, the one little tricky bit that I do need to show you, and it's just it's not really it's not really tricky, it's just a thing you should know, uh, is that because we try to include some, some features that are a little bit above the kind of standard four states in Lectora buttons, we, um, in certain layouts and interactions, or certain interactions rather, will include two buttons for each individual button. Um, back in the day, we used to include three, we got that down to two. Um, but that's one that shows under the normal state, right? and then one that'll show once that normal state is hidden because the user has clicked it, um, this secondary state will show up. It's your visited state. Okay, and so they each have uh, hovered, active, or hovered down and disabled states that are kind of unique to them. So whenever you do make a change to your one button, you've got to make it. You got to make it in two spots. Um, but it is just as easy in both spots. It's the exact same process, right? Uh, so I'm going to do that here on the second button, so that when we preview, you can see how that'll work. But I'm going to skip it on the third one, just so I don't bore you with. Uh, too much repetition here, if you don't mind. And instead, we're gonna focus on building this thing out, okay? All right, one in white. Okay, all right. So we're gonna just say that button one's done, and we're gonna pretend like button two here has been handled as well, and uh, move forward. So in order to uh, build out what I need, I just need to move my button. My machine is lagging on me here. There we go. Get those folks into position. And now we just need to go ahead and insert our Venn diagram. So I'm just gonna bring a shape in. Good part, you know, earlier I was saying this Lectora shapes, they're really customizable. Uh, they do a great job of, of these shapes in Lectora. We tend to like them. Um, oops, sorry. That's not the right size at all. Um, so, uh, the cool thing about shapes in Lectora, uh, if I'm not sure if you're familiar, if everybody's familiar with this, but the cool thing about shapes in Lectora uh, is that they are all kind of unique to the view, and I mean, obviously, every everything is like that in Lectora, really, right? So, like, depending on what device view you're in, what breakpoint view you're in, you can adjust the size and uh, position of different objects. But I really like that with shapes because you can play with shapes in Lectora in different breakpoints and get some pretty unique effects, right? So, not only can you adjust very easily the general layout. But you could kind of get contextually different things on an individual on, a, on two different breakpoint views just by playing with shapes a little differently. I realize I'm probably just rambling as I'm building this and not making a ton of sense. But uh, using point is using uh, the flexibility that Lectora gives you with the items that it or with the objects it gives you to work with natively in Tool, you can actually do a ton um, between device views uh, for your your courses. So. Get in there and play with what they have. A lot of times, I see developers in Lectora that tend to tend to use more, you know, image-based stuff or think you got to be stuck to 
pictures or, or flat graphics, and you don't. Okay, so on this guy, uh, it's just one label, right? All you need to do is make a change in one spot for each label, even though you gotta edit the buttons a couple times. And then we'll go ahead and label these out, personal and workspace. Okay, and then it looks like a little big on font there, so we're just gonna sky over. And just, okay. And again, we're just being kind of imprecise today. Uh, so uh, the way our interactions work, I should probably break those down for you. Okay? Um, like I was saying, we try to target uh, try to target groups in Lectora as much as possible, uh, and that allows us to, to make these interactions pretty flexible. Okay? When you when you click on a, a given button in interaction in in Lectora, it's going to run a few actions, right? That's how that's how Lectora works. Um, we combine direct actions on the button and running content uh, action groups, right, um, to to get get the effects that we want and kind of maximize um, efficiency, really, to minimize the number of overall um, actions that we need to run at a given time. Okay. So if you click on button one here, you'll see that this set of actions runs. Same thing, really. It's basically a duplicate on the visited state. So we're just going to look at this. First thing that it does is it runs the hide content action. Okay, so if I go up top, I'll see this hide content action that's running here. If I look in that, I see that it actually hides this intro content section here. It hides my page content for tabs one, two, three, four, five, and six, which we can delete four, five, and six to prevent some errors in the future. Uh, and it also runs this hide mobile content thing, which is obviously going to be specific to mobile. So going back to my button. Uh, the next thing that it does is it hides the normal state of itself. It enables the visited state of itself by setting a variable up here, okay? Um, and then it runs the show visited states action group, which again, we can delete four, five, six references anywhere in there. Um, but what those do is pretty much what it sounds like. It, it shows, turns on these visited buttons as long as that variable has, has been, uh, has been, enabled that we mentioned in the last one. Um, we also are, are you know, re-enabling some buttons that we disable during the, in this action stack here. Okay. Um, after that, we show a selected state, or basically by disabling the visited button, that's what we're doing here, okay? Uh, that's why we need to re-enable it in this, this section up here earlier that I just mentioned. We show that mobile elements, um, or we run that show mobile elements action group, and then we also show specific buttons all the way down at the bottom that last action is really the main one that we need to care to, to worry about for for specific buttons that shows a group content tab one right so obviously on button two it's going to show content tab two and button three is going to show content tab three all right so we're not showing individual content blocks we're showing content groups that gives you the option to do a couple things one um you can you can obviously go in and change this content block just like this however you see fit without worrying about it, whatever. But you can also then just add new stuff, as many of these new stuffs as you want, um, to a content group uh, and not have to worry about adjusting your action, right? So like I just went in and added this second content box that, that technically we don't, we don't need for this build, but we're gonna just pop it in there just for sake of it. Um, and now, whenever I run button one, it's going to show both of these instead of just showing the one, right? So we, we target action group, or we target content groups as much as, as possible. You can also add images or videos or whatever, whatever you want. Um, in, in our case, all we need to worry about uh, are these chunks of content. So I'm just going to grab those here. And in content tab one, I'm going to paste over what's already there. Oops. That was an error. Okay. Hmm. Let's go ahead and reorder. There we go. I like that. We're going to do the same thing basically with this group. We'll move this content block over, right align it, 
grab my content from my uh, document here. And then same thing. Okay. All right, so at this point, we can just do a quick little preview. See what happens. Okay, so we've got everything. Well, that's about right. Click that and workplace shows up. Oh, I put them in the wrong spot. That's my fault for not paying attention to which ones I moved around. But, <laughs> of course I did. Had I done that properly, um, First of all, it's a really easy thing to change. Second of all, had I done that properly, you'd see that in, what, five minutes there, we went from one interaction, uh, and, you know, human error <laughs> human error aside, we went from this interaction here to that interaction there uh, in about, what, five minutes, maybe, maybe, maybe seven, um, and that's with me kind of rattling on and yakking throughout it, right? So point is, um, that's a pretty that's a pretty significantly different interaction in in my opinion. Um, uh, you know, we, we're getting that done really rapidly. Certainly, the time to build it um, would have been much 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 more than uh, than you know five seven minutes, right? All right. So uh, if there's no if there aren't any questions yet, I'm just going to keep on going through. Um, since we're up against time a little bit, I'm going to probably skip this next page that we have, because uh, it's another 50-50 with character. Um, suffice to say, I was just going to, the way that I would build this one is I'd, I'd probably pull my quote bubble from this screen and paste it into my 50-50. Uh, and then, you know, instead of going in and, and changing that image like we did last time, um, I'd probably just go insert a character uh, and, and find one from the library in the main pane here. Um, insert that as I saw fit, and then build out the page identically to how we did that previous one. Um, I'd, I'd like to show show you guys this other click to reveal uh, that we have on deck, though, so I might skip past a couple of these pages if that's all right. We do have a question about um, the visited state. Yes, Does that use the basic var variable? Uh, is it built in or is it manually created? Can you just talk about those states for a little bit real quick? Yeah, absolutely. So the way that this works is it uses, so, um, all right, so we're basically using, um, a, we've got a custom variable, okay, and um, if you this enable visited state, if you select that action, you'll see up here, we've got fewer timeline button one. We set that equal to one. The default, the default value is zero, okay? So what happens is when you, uh, when you load this, this, um, this page, the visited, is going to initially the visited button is going to initially be hidden, right? So it's not obviously not going to show up. Um, the, the normal state of the button will initially be visible. When you click it, click the uh, the normal state of the button, it's going to set that custom variable, your timeline button one or two or three or four or five or six, right, to one, um, and then uh, it's going to um, and then it's you're we're going to use that as a checker up here. Uh, in your show visited states pane, right? So show to turn on your visited one, we're going to show it as long as that variable has been uh, has been um, set to one. Okay. So now, obviously, you know if you're going to use, for instance, more than one of that same interaction uh, in in a uh, course starter, you're going to want to modify that variable to control your visited states. Um, and, but that's a, a fairly easy process. You would just need to create um, new variables, right? Just go to your variables pane, create new ones here by either copying or uh, you know names and then creating a new one, right? Um, or just keying it in however you see fit. Um, and then uh, just assigning that to those two conditional spots, right? So you would you would tie that both to your button. Here, so instead of one, maybe that would be you know enabled timeline button six from this drop down, uh, and then in your show visited states pane, 
that would be your conditional in your if state or in your 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 uh, if payment. All right. Any questions on that one, or any any further questions on on that? Or I think you covered it. I think that was great. All right. So what I'd like to do then, I'm going to skip over these next three because I'm 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 going to burn time if I don't, uh, and then I will I'm going to jump into if we still have time, I want to show you the um, the the test and how we how we set that up uh, as well. Um, so this is a just a standard click to reveal that that we have in Fira here, okay? Um, and and the reason I wanted to show you this one is it's uh, kind of a it's a great example of what I mean by you can edit content in content groups simply and easily here without having to worry about the actions, okay? So uh, in this particular case, um, this four tab click to reveal, you know, when you click a button, it turns on, you click content one, it's gonna turn on content tab one, which is initially hidden, it's gonna set it to view. Um, and then those are gonna hide when we run through the visited states. Um, which by the way, this functions almost identically to the timeline, right? We're running a show visited states thing here. We kind of, we're pushing you back through actions it's, it's all very 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 similar okay um but if you wanted to you didn't want this video to be in this content group and instead you wanted this content group to contain uh a character like we had been using right um the the cool part about developing against content groups like that in like torah is that it's almost like if you're familiar you know if you use some of the other more layers based authoring tools um, that's a good analogy in my mind for that is that the content groups kind of function like layers, right? So if you, if you think about them that way, you're just turning on a layer. It means anything you stack in that or on that layer is going to be tied to that same action. So that's, that's how we build these. Um, so for instance, in this content tab one, I had a video, I deleted that video. Now I'm just going to pop another character in there. Um, just, just to, to show this, um, to you. And, and so that character, oops, forgot to hit select. Didn't I? Yeah. So that character will pop in there uh, now and show in place of, uh, let's say, offset from right. I'm going to say 400, so she's right there at the edge. Yeah, okay. So that character now, if I were to run this, she's going to show up in place of that video and will automatically be present whenever I click tab one, right? So tab two, three, and four, content one, there she is. So we try to we try that's why we try to build these out in content groups. Aside from the fact it's just easier to go through and look at. So um, that being said, I'm realizing it's actually already 150. So I'm just I'm just going to pop on if you don't mind and and at least just walk you through how we set up the quiz because that's a pretty important part of the courses. You got you got to be able to show what you know, right? Um, okay, so all the tests, uh, all all of our course starters come with the test. Obviously, um, it's going to be. Uh, same kind of basic setup on questions, but we've styled them for you to match this theme. Um, we give you an intro quest or an intro screen, uh, and then a series of different question types, and then we give you a pass uh, screen and a fail uh, a fail screen. All right. Important part about this is that every bit of the test is direct. It's none of it's custom. I mean, it's it's custom designed. It's custom built. But we're using all built-in Lectora functions to control it. Right. So. Um, in the past, we've seen Lectora developers that, you know, get kind of crafty with how you build out uh, certain types of interactions. Maybe you got to use JavaScript. That's awesome. We, we're not doing that for testing. You know, we might do that in certain other places, but we won't do that for testing um, because we'll make things easier for you. So we're only using built-in question types, but we style the daylights out of them so they look really nice for you um, in all device views, right? So for instance, right, in this, in this particular course, um, I'm, I've got to put a multiple choice and a true false question in here. Actually, this is one of my favorite parts about course starters because tests are always, they're monotonous, right? They're always kind of boring. The good part about course starters to me is that I can just pop this thing open. I can dump my content in there, whatever that content happens to be, and it's ready to go um, without me having to do, you know, there we go, without me having to do anything for, for all device views, all right? Um, so, so we've got another question about um, screen reading, screen reading order. Uh, okay. Someone's pointing out that you, you use a lot of groups in this uh, in this presentation. You're showing us a lot of groups. Um, this person says, I avoid grouping objects because of a concern about screen reading order. Is this an issue or will the individual objects get read in their order within the group? 
Well, um, so, you know, I, so I'll be perfectly honest with you, and I will say that, uh, so 508 is so complex and so particular that I, I would want to confirm my answer on that and come back to you. I want to not give you the wrong information, but my understanding is that within the, within the group that that order should generally still flow. Again, let me confirm with somebody else who kind of specializes in that, and uh, maybe if we could shoot that question my way in email, I can get back with you. Would that work for you, uh, Andrew? Sure. Yeah, we'll flag that one as well. Yeah. I'm I am regularly I'm regularly proven wrong, but we we have we have absolutely we've run this through our uh, some 508 experts went through um, our course starters and kind of vetted what we had done and 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 really taught us a, 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 a kind of an optimal way to build out in Lectora. Um, so I'll get back with them and just confirm you know what 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 we're saying is accurate because we've kind of built this out uh, on on best guidance from from that. So yeah. I love having 508 specialists that can help you out because uh, that's a tricky, tricky subject. <laughs> uh, okay, anything else on on these, or are we how are we doing, Andrew? I think we're good. Okay, there's well, a lot of more general questions about micro learning best practices and uh, stuff like that, but uh, I think that's a discussion for another day. You're probably right. Yeah, I I, uh, I think I've I've really put us up against the time on time here. I, I uh, so I'm gonna just stop with the build because you know from here on out i think you'll probably get the idea um we've made these super 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 quick and easy for you um to do okay um or super quick and easy for you to use so it, it, you know a lot of what you're going to see me build out is probably going to be a little repetitious from here on out most of our interactions work very similarly to what i've shown you it's just a few quick edits here and there most of that's to content Maybe some fill fill images, whatnot. We try to build it in a way where you know you you can you can do these things without a ton of headache. So I think we're probably at a good point, you know, showing you different stuff. Um, any specific questions that we have, or or even some of those general questions, if you want to shoot them my way, I'd I'd love to help uh, answer those. Andy. However you want to handle that. All right, we'll do that, and we'll get uh, we'll get those published when we do our webinar recap uh, early next week. Great. Okay, well, then for me, I think I don't have a really a ton more to go over. Um, I would just uh, probably toss it back to Andrew um, and say, you know, if, if I'm sure he'll say something similar, but if you, you know, if you like what you've seen in the course starters, definitely go check out the library. We've got tons more coming out, uh, and uh, you know, it's it's growing at a rapid clip going forward. So uh, I'll toss back to you, Andrew. Great. Thanks, Bill. This has been super useful. If you guys want to take a look at some of those course starters, maybe vet them before uh, you expand your, your access to them, you should try our seven-day free trial where you can download 10 assets, 10, uh, any of our assets. Um, and today we expanded our stock uh, photos library from three and a half million to 120 million. So, I mean, there's just tons in there now. So, uh, if you want to give that a shot, if you want to see what we've got in there, you can jump onto the seven-day free trial and download those. Um, also, if you are interested in the tool and you're not really, you don't have access to Lectora Online right now, you can go to lectoraonline.com and uh, and check it out there and uh, get access to it uh, as you need it there. Again, thank you so much, Bill. Sorry we weren't able to answer some of these questions. I threw some really hardball ones at him and. We'll try to get those answered in the future. Uh, we'll either reach out directly to you to get those answered or we'll publish them in the webinar recap early next week. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining, and we hope we'll see you guys next time.